Hello, St. Louis, and welcome to the STL Leaders Podcast, hosted by Brian Bisking. Brian started this weekly podcast to give a voice to leaders of our community, to share their story, their journey, and the lessons that they have learned along the way. Brian grew up in a small town outside of St. Louis, where he watched his father run a small business and was always interested in how the leaders in his community got where they are. Whether it's a local business leader, a philanthropist, or a celebrity, these are your STL leaders. Join us today, where we will chat with another pillar of our community on this week's episode of the STL Leaders Podcast. And now, your host, Brian Bisking. Hello, St. Louis, and welcome to the STL Leaders Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Bisking. And on this week's episode, we welcome Ryan Shapiro with PEOMG. But before we get to this week's episode, I want to thank my sponsors. First, Synchrony HR and NWO IT Services. And now this week's episode with Ryan Shapiro. Ryan Shapiro, welcome to the STL Leaders Podcast. I appreciate you joining me today. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Excited to be on. Absolutely. Well, we've known each other for several years. I don't even really really know how many years it's been now, probably five, six years. Okay. Uh, our paths crossed at a, at a previous employer and uh, really, really excited to talk to you about the launch of your new company, uh, PEOMG. And so let's just start there. Talk to me about growing up here in the St. Louis area and what led you to decide to start your own entity. Yeah, I mean, you said it. I grew up here in St. Louis, kind of born and raised, never really left outside of maybe three, four years out in San Francisco and Silicon Valley, um, but always really been here in St. Louis. And, um, you know, it, it. what I love about St. Louis is it's a lot of hardworking people. It's a, it's a small business community. And, and ultimately, that's kind of what brought me to this point. You know, my father was an entrepreneur. He uh, started when I was very young, a, a typewriter rental company. So that kind of dates a little bit. <laughs> around. Um, it evolved into like a computer rental company. And um, and so, you know, really kind of in a lot of ways, always wanting to do something like that um, and follow in his footsteps. You know, also, I had the opportunity, my family outside of my father was all educators. So, so much of what I have done in my life has been about education, more on the business side and more on the leadership side of things, but, um, uh, and selling. So, uh, you know, I've kind of got, you know, both sides of it in, in my, in my DNA, you know, to, to start a business and, and, you know, and really through that business educate. And that's really what PEOMG is about. It's, it's about educating small to medium-sized business owners and decision makers about this really amazing solution that sits out in the marketplace, but it's key that you understand how it works and how it's the right fit for you. And so it's kind of the merging of those two concepts that have been, you know, in my life. Sure, for sure. Well, let's do this. For those that are listening and when they hear the words PEO, they're probably like, what in the world does that mean? Uh, unless you're in the business or you work with a PEO, you have zero idea what it means. So why don't you give us a 30,000 foot overview of what a PEO does for a business? Yeah. So PEO is a really unique structure in a, a fully outsourced HR model where a small to medium sized business can have their, this HR instant infrastructure layered into their business to help, help them and their employees focus on the things that are most core to their business's success while giving the resources to that business to manage things like payroll and have really attractive benefits to attract and retain and, and motivate people, as well as managing you know, other things that I've always found and that small business owners didn't get in business to do like manage taxes and compliance and reporting. So it, it kind of takes care of all of that in one fell swoop. And it also leverages a unique legal structure of co-employment to transfer not only some of that risk and liability off the business, which really feels great when you're an entrepreneur to have somebody taking and sharing some of the load, but also leverages unique buying power to make 
expensive programs that you need to attract and retain those employees like benefits and other insurance programs and helping people understand how powerful that tool could be. And, um, you know, the PEO is a, a really great fit for almost every small to medium sized business out there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know you've been in the market for a long time and, and so have I, and I always, uh, I always like to ask people, uh, kind of, you know, that I know that are in the, in the industry, what that, what that means to them, because I always get different answers. Right. But, um, you know, I think what's unique that about good? Is that a good one? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think what's unique about your organization and well, let's dive into really PEOMG is uh, kind of the approach that you guys are taking to the marketplace, right? There are obviously what I always call the the big PEOs out there, your ADP total sources, your insperities, your paychecks, your trinets. Um, you know, back in the day it was Oasis, uh, who's obviously now merged with paychecks. Uh, and then there's small guys like Synchrony HR, right? Like us that are kind of more of a Midwestern PEO that are more boutique -y and and uh, can kind of can customize things to them. And so dive into kind of the concept of PEOMG and what makes it so special. Yeah, no, I mean, that that's it. There's there's so many PEOs out there. There's best in class and best in class can be big publicly traded ones and best in class can be small regional ones like Synchrony. So it, it's what makes it best in class is what's, a right fit for that particular small to medium sized business. And, and how I got to this point was I was with Insperity, you know, for 12 plus years and, um, you know, really loved what Insperity did. I, I, I drank the Kool-Aid rightfully so, cause it was a great solution, but even with as great as it was, there was times that it was not the right fit. I would be sitting across from a business owner or with one of my respective sales reps and trying to figure out how to make this work. And somewhere along the line, it would enter into my consciousness that, they really aren't a fit. They're either not so focused on the things that Insperity are really good at, or they don't have a need for some of the maybe transformational HR solutions that can be a little costly. And there's really another PEO out there that does a great job that would be a good fit. But I was wearing the blue and green of Insperity at the time. And, you know, I had a covenant with that company that you do when you're employed by someone to, to you know, uh, present that solution. And that's what we did. And that, that wasn't always the right move, it, it, you know, probably more often than not, it wasn't. And so we did that. And that always kind of stuck with me that if, if I could have in that situation brought a synchrony in or even an ADP total source um, that might have aligned a little bit more to that company's needs, not only from a business fit, but from a financial fit, that that would be better, not only for the clients, certainly, and like most importantly, but also for the PEO industry at large, because so much of the negativity that an indus any industry can have is about matching wrong fits with wrong clients, solutions and people not matching up. And so, you know, that hurt, hurts the PEO industry, just like any industry is hit. And so for us, as our goal is to really help both help a small to medium sized business with a truly agnostic approach around which solution is the best fit for them, make a recommendation to one PEO that is the absolute right fit based on my 17 years of experience in human capital and PEO and, um, and, and, and then guide that person through a very, you know, curated process of evaluating that PEO the right way and helping the PEO match their services that are the right fit for them with the needs that they have. And then coming up with a, a structure financially that makes sense for both parties now and in the future. And that's just really hard to do when you're presenting five or six different PEOs at once. It's too much for a business owner to assess and really feel confident about it. And two, it's, it's not great for the PEOs because they're cannibalizing each other in their own business and, and the fees that they deserve to get when they deliver good services. And so we're going to help fix that. And as a result, more, better, longer term relationships will occur between small to medium sized business owners and their PEO. And these are, these will, what we'll hear more often is this was the best decision I ever made for my business. I've heard that throughout my career at Insperity, talking with other PEOs, but it doesn't happen as frequently as it should because that, that good fit isn't happening. That perfect right fit isn't happening. And so we're, it's going to be a special opportunity because we're going to do that. And from our PEO partners, they're all super excited about our approach because it is different and very disruptive to what exists out there today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll say a couple things to that. One, I'll, I'll comment on the different PEOs that are out there. 
Uh, obviously, I'm in the space of PEO and <clears throat> compete against you know several of those PEOs that you have mentioned. And the one thing that I've always recognized to your point is there are PEOs out there that are great fits for some companies and not for every company, right? Um, Insperity, I obviously also worked there. Insperity is a fantastic PEO. They're a fantastic organization. Uh, I loved the you know two and a half, three years that I was there. Um, but to your point, they were not a fit for every single organization. But I would also say they're a great fit for some organizations that are looking for different things and have different needs than other organizations. And so what I really liked about your approach when you kind of first uh, approached me about it was exactly that. I also work, as you know, with a lot of insurance brokers in the St. Louis area, the Kansas City area, Colorado, Kentucky. And, you know, I, I don't expect every insurance broker to only refer to Synchrony HR. I, I get that. There's other PEOs out there. There's other relationships, et cetera. My request to them has always been, you can have any relationship you want. You can refer any PEO you want. My request, though, is if you bring a deal to me, you're only bringing it to me because you understand that you value the relationship, the partnership, our model, what we do and how we do it. Because to your point, when you start bringing in five, six, seven PEOs, uh, then it becomes a commodity. And you're just, most of the time, the company is simply looking at the price point um, and not necessarily the needs and the differences between the PEOs. So what I really loved about your approach when you kind of kind of brought it to to me and Kyle Kelly, our CEO, was that you're going to really do that legwork of really having the discovery call with the client, understanding why they're looking for what they're looking for or what has sparked their interest, and then understanding, okay, well, I have these X, Y, and Z partners. I know that this one or this one is probably the best pit, fit for the need that this organization is looking for. And what that does is, to your point, solidifies a great partnership for not only the PEO, but the client, but also as you for the, from a consultancy perspective. And so I think, you know, I'm excited about your new endeavor here, and I think you're going to be very successful at it. Uh, and I was excited to kind of, you know, uh, help you launch this here with PEOMG. And I think you're, I think you've got a, a, a very a vibrant model that is, to your point, very disruptive because there's a lot of PEO brokers out there who will do exactly what you just said. They'll partner with you know, 20 PEOs, and then they'll get a lead from somebody and they'll go quote seven of them and spreadsheet them and put them in Excel documents and say, okay, here, Mr. Prospect, here's the seven PEOs that bid on them. Here's what the costs are. Uh, and to your point, cost is one equation, one piece of the entire model that a PEO has. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very different. It's a little scary. You know, you do market research when you're going to start a business, right? Uh, at least you, you, it's a good idea to. And <laughs> we, uh, you know, we did a lot of it. Um, we, we were very passionate about the way we were going to approach it, but we just wanted to see, like, maybe this isn't as revolutionary of a concept as we thought. And um, it appeared to be so because yeah, I see, you know, great people and everything else. And, and I know some of these people and it's right on the, on the, on the page. It's compare. And it's like, it's, it's a big focus on comparison. And, and it's not that we're at PEOMG, we're not going to consider everybody. We're not coming in with blinders to a single PEO. We're coming in with deep knowledge of every single one out there, but it's all going to be predicated on what you need. Like the way you look at your employees, how they're central to your business's success, like what shortfalls you have to having better or even the best employees you could and how you need certain tools and resources in order to get to the highest point of your trajectory for your business. And so it's going to start with that. And that's going to really make clear who's the best fit. And then we're going to make it super clear for you as to why that's the case. So that there's, there's no confusion as to why this particular PEO is the right PEO. And, um, you know, and, and, and with that, we've done some other things to make our customers feel more confident. You know, one of the things is for our customers, our services are free. They don't have to pay us. And the traditional model that we're going to continue with out there is that the PEOs compensate these PEO brokers. What's unique about PEOMG, however, to kind of build on, on this disruptive approach is we will only take the same compensation from all PEOs. So no one PEO will be allowed to pay us more if they if we do opt to recommend them and then our client subsequently implements with them. So it's, it's really important to us and the team here at PEOMG that our clients know that not only is the, our focus them and their human capital needs and how to grow their business through their people, but two, that there are no financial motivators out there for us whatsoever, because we have basically made them all the same, or we in fact have. And when we put, and that gives them the confidence, we've already seen this in a couple of our engagements that 
they know that money was not a factor. And that's just so critical to us because uh, that we want our customers to have the confidence to make that right decision. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it keeps you kind of just transparent and actually as a consultant, rather than being, you know, your pocket stuffed by another PEO to send more business their way, right? It, it just kind of keeps you all, everybody on the same leveling field. Yeah. So obviously I know you, you made the big announcement last week. We launched, you launched the company. Um, talk to us about, you know, we, you and I chatted here briefly before we jumped on the podcast, but talk to us briefly about how the launches went and kind of the success that you guys are already having. Yeah. Um, it's gone great. It's, uh, it's scary. Like day one, you kind of hit the button and kind of LinkedIn seems to be the natural place to hit that button. And like, you wonder if anybody's actually going to care and, <laughs> <laughs> um, outside of like friends, you know, friends and family, but, uh, we've got a tremendous response, um, not only, you know, just on our approach, but the thoughtfulness we put in the launch and the branding, the way we communicate around our services and, and the way that we care about small to medium sized business owners and their employees. And um, people have really attached to our mission. That's a lot of the feedback I've gotten as well Is you know, and our mission is to help every small to increase the success equation of every small to medium sized business and enhance the lives of the people surround them. It's a it's a calling. It's a deeper focus of helping small business more than anything else. And. And as such, um, you know, we've had a lot of companies contact us and want to talk and figure out who the right PEO is for them. We've had a lot of PEOs reach out to us and want to be considered as a potential partner. And, um, you know, we've just had a lot of people that are, are really excited about this. And as such, we've got a couple organizations in flight at the moment um, in their process and in making PEO decisions shortly. And we've got some a lot more coming in behind it. And so it's not only is it going great, but it's it's getting really busy, um, which you know I'm certainly fine with. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's always a good thing to get busy on the launch of a new business for sure. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this question, kind of a unique little question. You know, we talked about all these different PEOs, and you know, you, you mentioned kind of the reputation of the PEO industry, and you know, there's been times that the reputation of the PEO industry it hasn't been great. Uh, I would say I think it's gotten a lot better since I started in this industry back in 2010. Uh, which seems more late, right? Right. Yes. There. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I can remember when I first started at ADP back in the day, it was like PEO. I would talk to a, a, you know, a manufacturer and they're like, what the heck does that even stand for? Especially here in St. Louis in the Midwest. A lot of people, you know, 13, 14 years ago had no idea what it even really was or how, you know, I, I can remember people, people saying, is this legal? <laughs> I mean, like, you know, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's legal. But one thing I've always wondered was, you know, you've been in the industry much longer than I have. What is one thing, and I would probably answer this differently than you probably would answer it, but what is one thing that you think that you wish you could change about the connotation of the PEO industry? Like what's one thing you wish a business knew um, about PEOs that they probably don't? Yeah. Um, I, I touched on it before. It's, it's that it actually can be the best decision you make for your business, um, particularly around the employees. I also want them to know it can be, and, and this is kind of what we're serving as. It. it can also be as, as powerful as it can be. It can be as equally disruptive or even destructive to a business's growth trajectory if you get with the wrong one. Um, it, it pulls time and focus and money away, and like that's risky. Um, and getting with the right one, though, can just really propel a business forward in, in such a significant way. Get them better employees, have their employees feel like their employer cares about them make their employer immediately an employer of choice in their marketplace. And like, what does that say not only to their employees, but their customers? And, and, and it really can just accelerate things so quickly. And it, and it centers around that right PEO relationship. And so that's what I want people to know is that this is a really powerful tool out there. It's shocking how many people don't know about it still to this day. I, my first blog was, uh, you know, which, you know, was a painful process for me as someone <laughs> not editorial space was about at PEO moment, like OH. And it's, it kind of built upon when I told my dad many years ago, like what I was doing. And he was like, I wish that this existed when I was a business owner. And the reality is it did. And he just didn't know about it. And so I, I, I what I'd love for people to know is, is know about it and know how powerful it can be. And, and, you know, recognize that it is getting better with what's going on in the marketplace, with the battle for talent and the hybrid workforce, a PEO, an outsourced model that delivers resources in to your business and scalability, along with the buying power that these firms have is really unparalleled. 
um, in the small to medium-sized business. Because what it does is it takes everything that people love about being in a small to medium-sized business, like being close to the center of it, working with your employees, having that family feel and autonomy to make decisions and, and be innovative and everything else, but also have the resources that employees love that exist in big companies, like really great benefits and infrastructure that makes things easy to know what's going on and, and get training and resources and performance appraisals and everything else. And just like streamline all these things that, that you can have the best of both worlds. You can have everything that people love and perhaps would rather work in a small business to, to access but not forego those enormous resources that a big company has. And so this is really, you can have both in a PEO. Yep, for sure. I, I think that's a great answer um, in regards to like, I mean, to your point, a lot of companies still don't even know that this is an option out there, no matter, you know, and I, and I, I was just actually messaging with a guy this morning who, who works at uh, another large PU. I won't name the PO just keep confidentiality reasons uh, safe, but you know, he was like, I don't, I don't know if it makes sense for us to have a, a coffee. We're competitors. And I'm like, no, it, you're looking at it all wrong, right? I, I hope Trinet's having success. I hope Insperity's having success. I hope ADP's having success. Because what you're doing is you're educating the market. And the more we educate the market on what these availabilities are and what these tools and resources can be for you, the better we all do, right? The better every PEO in the industry industry does. And so I, I would I would agree with that answer. But I'd also say the one thing that always is so challenging for me, and I've been fighting it for 13 years, is the, the organizations who think they lose control of their business because they're entering into this relationship. Uh, and that's the one thing, even to this day, I still have companies who ask us about that. Like, well, are these your employees? Are they our employees? Like who, you know, do I lose control of this? And, you know, it's the same response every time that I have to explain that, but that's the one like connotation that's in there in our industry is that they just lose control of the business. Their pride and joy that they've worked so hard to build. Uh, and to your point, no, it, this is a tool to help propel your business. It's not, it, Synchrony has zero desire to run your business. We don't, I mean, we don't have a, we don't want nothing to do with that, right? It's just about giving you the resources resources and the tools to help you run your business more efficiently and smoothly. Yeah, completely. It's a, it's a great point. It's funny. It's for me, it was always a trigger that we were having the right conversation because if a small to medium sized business owner was worried about losing control, like having the employees not feel like they're theirs, like that means they care. They care yeah, about their, their very employees, true. which is, is a great trigger. So you, it's a great place to spend a lot of time talking about everything else. Um, the ones that, and I've had those conversations, I'm sure you have, they're like, oh yeah, take my employees. Like, yeah. It's really not a great fit for PEO because you kind of have to care about your employees and how they help your business. Um, even though that obstacle of co-employment was just stepped over real easily. So yeah, I, I, I'd love for, and it, it will always be a challenge to explain that to people, not be in concept, but just what it feels like because it yeah. exists today. And I think that that's a problem we solve too, is Agreed. that this, this unbiased opportunity to say, hey, listen, I get it. Like, let's spend time talking about this. This doesn't maybe get addressed enough in traditional PEO sales processes, like what co-employment means and how it could actually feel to you. So at PEO and G, we'll have the opportunity to just sit in there and talk about that for 30, 40 minutes or two days if we need to, because it's, it's, the, one of the greatest assets in the relationship is that co-employment relationship. And it's a thing that oftentimes people are most scared of. And so we're going to, we're going to make sure that our customers have confidence in every aspect of the decision from how the service works all the way up to co-employment and the way they're going to feel right after their employees go through their onboarding and, and have had that moment to go like, okay, it hasn't changed. Everything's fine. These people still think I'm their business owner or their leader and, um, the, the world didn't change with the stroke of a pen to an right. employment agreement, but they need to feel confident about that before they do it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, let's switch, shift gears here just a little bit. Uh, I want to talk about your leadership style. Obviously, I know you were in leadership over at Insperity, and this podcast is all about leadership and the leaders we have in our community. Um, and I got a huge event coming up here in two weeks uh, for this podcast where I'm recognizing some of the top leaders we've had on this show and that are in our community here in St. Louis. So talk to me a little bit about your leadership style. Where did you learn to become a leader? How has it, how has it changed over the years? Uh, those types of things. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely changed over the years. Uh, my first opportunity to really be a leader was at Insperity uh, was, you know, 
given the opportunity to be the, the leader in the St. Louis market. And, and that kind of propelled not only my whole leadership career forward, but um, uh, just my whole professional career. And, you know, it started out with probably being more of a manager than a leader. Uh, I was young and, you know, a little more too tactile and focused on numbers and things like that, and trying to control things I couldn't control. And what, what, I, I really leaned back on was that my personality style, what I was reflecting early as a leader was not kind of who I was, but like what I thought I should do as a young leader and, you know, reflected more upon like the way my father ran his business and the way my grandfather was a superintendent of like Afton school districts. And, and even the way my mother ran not only our house, but as an educator and thought a lot about those things. And, and I was blessed to have really good people uh, who were patient with me. And I think believed in me more so than my approach at the time. And, and then it kind of transformed and it transformed into really people centric, really focused on those people and a core concept of servant leadership that at the end of the day, they, I, they did not work for me. I worked for them and I was there to get them to their goals and their hopes and their dreams and things they wanted. And, and when they gave, you know, and Sperry or, or Ryan, you know, 40 plus hours of their week every week, like how was I honoring that gift that they were giving me to spend time and, and help us as a team accomplish goals? And so it really transformed. And so I spent much more intentional time focusing on them and what they wanted and where their gaps were, what, how we could overcome these things. And, and by doing that, that, that kind of, that changed everything for me. Um, I became much more hand in the dirt leader, ready to go out, whether that's go on sales calls, get in conference rooms and do training endlessly, just spend time um, with those people. And I, it became really important to me that they, they never thought that um, me spending time in my office was, was a priority and it, and it, and it wasn't. And so I, I spent my time living out in the field and with them. And, and that was, that was really key. And I, I, I think, and you know, some of the outreach I've gotten as I've, you know, come you know, out with this business of PEOMG is, is a lot of great feedback that maybe was doing a good job out there as a leader and following my North star of focusing on those people, um, has been really great. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I would tell you, I've, you know, I obviously I'm the VP of sales for synchrony and kind of lead our sales team. And I've, I've been in a, you know, similar role at uh, previous companies, but, uh, servant leadership is how I lead as well. Right. I, I, I had a rep this morning, reach out about an opportunity. And I said, let me help. How, how can I help you? What, what do you need from me? What is it that I can do to, for you? Uh, and she said, I know you're too busy to help me. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's, that's my job. My job is to help you. So uh, I think it's really important to continue to, like you said, just to be there in the field with the team and help them and show them that, Hey, I'll get, I'll get down and dirty and crunch some numbers and, and ha have a conversation with anybody just to help you. If it helps you hit your goal, because I think, Sometimes it, it's hard for salespeople to realize that, you know, uh, it, when they succeed, we succeed. When they we succeed, the company succeeds. And at the end of the day, we talked about drinking the Kool-Aid earlier, right? It's it, you got to have, and one of my favorite books, Good to Great, and you got to have the right people on the bus and have the people that are on the bus in the right seats. And so I think that's that's so crucial to really any organization. And so uh, I really liked how you answered that because I, I can also see in myself how my leadership style has even changed over the last two years. Um, you know, even with my organization that I'm at now. So it's, uh, it's always good to be a servant leader. Showing up for your people is always the most important thing. It, it, you could do, you could be bad at other things and you could be a great leader um, all around because you show up for them. I mean, you know, work-life balance is important as a leader, um, not only for making sure your people take it, but for yourself as well, because you've got to have energy to be there for them. And that's really important. But when someone asks for help, you know, jumping at that opportunity is always real key. I mean, I, I remember I helped a rep on Christmas morning one day standing in, outside in the snow because I was kind of too embarrassed to go inside and be on work around my family. <laughs> and, uh, um, but I was happy to do it. You know, she deserved that. She she was working. She yep. was doing something that was important to us. And and I felt like that I absolutely should be too. And so um, happy to say we got that deal. But, you know, but at the end of the day, like the most important thing was that I was there for her and, and giving her back what she was giving to our organization. So, yeah, I was, I was actually in Disney world last week with my family on quote unquote vacation. I think if anybody who's listening to this knows me, it's very hard for me to really go on vacation. I always tell people I'm, I'm going to be out of town, but I will still be working. And, uh, 
multiple times last week, I would have reps call me and say, I'm so sorry to bother you. I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand that. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you, right? No matter where I'm at, I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm committed to helping you succeed. So it's a, it's a good trait for you to have for sure. Completely. It's yeah. It, when people know you care, they'll run through walls for you and they know you'll run through walls for them. And that that's really what it's all about. Yep. For sure. Well, Ryan, I always end this podcast by asking my guests to leave us with a piece of advice. So you can leave us with a piece of personal advice, business advice, anything you want to share. Uh, but if you could leave us with a piece of advice, what would it be? Um, you know, I, I would say, and this is shows up in my leadership. This has shown up in my life is, and it, you know, it, it could sound campy, but it, it's, you know, I, I've made an intentional focus to move towards things that are better and move towards things that make me happy. And PEO and G is a, a representation of better, you know, a better way to PEO. Um, but really my advice is like, you have to make that intentional. I, I think people talk about being happy and people, um, want to be happy certainly but like they don't put the, they don't make the qualifying decision to be happy and then move towards and take action um towards the things that make them happy and not only professionally personally every aspect of their life self-care and i think when you make that decision things start to happen um it's kind of it, it's kind of like that decision i made early as a leader to start focusing on my people as, and, as opposed to like the numbers and um that's what, that's what I would say is it, it, when you do that and you focus on happiness and the things that make you happy, your whole world changes and new doors open up and new opportunities open up. And it's, um, it's really something special, but so the, I, but in summary, the advice is that has to be intentional. It, it's yeah. not gonna be on its own. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. Be intentional. Um, it's a great piece of advice on behalf of myself and the STLers podcast, Ryan, I appreciate you being a great STL leader. Uh, wishing you nothing but the success with PEOMG. Uh, look forward to working with you again. And uh, please continue to follow and subscribe to our STL Leaders podcast uh, on the link below. Yeah. yeah, thank you for having me, Brian. This is a tremendous resource for people. People in St. Louis love it. I'm honored to be on it. So it's, it's really been, a, I, I love what you do and you know love working with you.